Hey guys, welcome to the wood shop. Today we are going to be talking about building a timber panel. What is a timber panel? Well, the uh, best way to put this is think about a roll top desk. That panel that rolls down the front of that, that is a timber panel. So we're doing a project and we need to build some timber doors. So what we're going to do today is we're going to demonstrate how that's done. This is a finished example of that and what it is is a bunch of strips of wood. Um, these could be of varying sizes, typically a little bit on the narrower side because they're going to have to fit into a groove and they go around a corner typically. So to do that, they need to be smaller. How do these pieces stay together? We put a piece of canvas on the back. It's glued in place, thus keeping this thing flexible but still very sturdy. So let's get to it. All right, the first step in making your timber panel is we need to make a jig to hold our slats, hold the individual slats. I've got a whole bunch of these cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay these face down inside this jig. Now I have made this jig the size of my panel. So if you're a larger panel, the jig is going to be sized for that. So what I have started with is I've got a right angle here. Okay, This way I can start putting my pieces in here. It keeps the panel perfectly square. All right, I've glued and stapled these down. Uh, this piece I've just screwed down, but I've already adjusted this for the, for the length of my slats. I want to keep them tight uh, top to bottom here. And then I have a loose cleat on the end that after I put all my slats in there, I'm going to smash them together as tight as I can. I'll move this up and then we'll screw that in place to keep that, that panel tight. So I've got a wider strip that I'm going to put in first. And the reason I have one strip that's wider than the others, if you'll notice, I've got some smaller strips. The wider strip is for a place for me to put a handle on this. This is going to be where the, the door handle goes. The rest of my strips are going to be the smaller, narrower ones. The slats should be 5 16 by half inch. And you can see on the end, I have created a couple small chamfers. And the only reason for that is purely for decorative uh, purposes. There are proprietary bit sets out there that have coves and uh, roundovers that allow these to fit together. We wanted to show you a, a simple way of making a timbre in your own shop with the tools and equipment that you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting these strips in here and I'm going to start by my leading strip, the wider strip, and then we're just going to start adding narrower strips as we go. Okay, once I've got all my strips in place, um, what I want to do is I'm kind of pushing my stop block up against there to make sure I can close up any gaps because obviously when you're cutting some of these uh, they can kind of twist and bow. You do have some of that. Uh, if they're really bad, um, I'd just go ahead and make, make, sure, make sure you make extra slats so you can get rid of those ones that just don't really want to come together. And the importance of this is because once we apply glue, which we're going to apply glue to this panel, is that we don't want glue going down inside those cracks. All right, so now that I've got everything, I'm going to tighten this up here, and then I'm going to secure my stop. So now that I have my panel secure inside my fixture here, the jig, everything's tight, um, and everything's kind of pushed down, make sure they're all kind of flat. A little undulation is not going to make a big difference here, because uh, the fabric is going to be able to follow some of those uh, une unevenness on that. I have cut a piece of fabric and this is just a regular canvas uh, fabric you pick up at your local fabric store and I have cut this to size and what I was looking for is I need about a half inch on the top and about a half inch on the bottom. I don't want it interfering in the track that the, that the timber is going to be going in and on my last slide I'm going to hold it back about a quarter inch and I have it about a quarter inch overlap so on my large slat on this end. The next step, because I, I'm going to add glue to this panel, is I don't want glue in those areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out a couple marks to where I want to put some tape. And I set about a quarter inch from the edge on that slat and about a quarter inch over that slat on this edge and then I said of course I want about a half inch up from either from either edge here 
And this is not super critical. I'm just, this is just for layout for my tape and you'll kind of see why we're doing this here in just a second once we start adding glue. So now I'm gonna lay on some blue painter's tape and just match up to those lines. This is where you need to be ready to go because once we add glue, we want to uh, move quickly and get the canvas in place before the glue starts to set up. A little about glue, a little goes a long ways. We're, we do not want this flooded with glue in a really thick surface. It's easier to add glue if you see some areas that are starving. It's easier to add that later. Um, so start with a, with a light hand here. I am using just uh, a regular uh, yellow wood glue. Um, we have plenty of time to get this canvas in place and it works just fine. If you feel comfortable with using a tight bond three or an extended type glue, that's fine. It's just gonna be a little bit longer in the form. So I'm just kinda adding some glue here. I have a little foam roller that I pick up. I use this for uh, veneer work. Um, it's a closed cell foam roller. These are available at art stores. Uh, they're av available at um, veneer supply stores. But it's a great way to spread glue evenly. And now you see why I've got that tape in place where I marked that out. Is I, This keeps that glue off the areas that I don't want canvas sticking to. If my canvas happens to run over the edge, that's fine. But it, I know that I'm not going to apply glue to the back of the slats where I don't want it. I'm just making sure I've got the glue all the way to the edges and now I've got a nice even coat on there. I'm now going to lay my canvas in place. Okay so I got my canvas and I'm just going to smooth that right onto that glued surface. You can see how that tacky glue really, as you're smoothing out, it takes all the wrinkles out of that canvas. So the canvas is going to stretch and move a little bit because you're, you've obviously introduced some moisture to it with the glue. Don't be concerned if it goes over the tape. It's not going to stick to that. Our biggest thing is that we want is that space on the top and bottom edge where there's no glue. Thus, it keeps it riding in that groove a lot easier. What we're going to do is we're going to wait about an hour with this yellow wood glue and then we're going to pull it out of the form carefully. Now that our glue is dried on our canvas and our timber slats, it's now time to take this out of the form. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, I'm just going to remove this tape and as I peel it back, I'm just going to be careful how I peel it back because I said the canvas may be stuck on top of some of the tape and we don't want to grab a hold of that canvas and rip it up. And this has been sitting in here for, oh, a little over an hour. It's yellow glue, so that's plenty of time for what we need. And you can kind of see here on this corner where that tape had stopped this canvas from, from uh, being glued down. And I'll come back in here with a knife and we'll just trim that up, clean that edge up. Same on this end here, because I got a little, a little over where my quarter inch marks were. Okay, so we're going to release our stop. And then kind of carefully pull this out and you can kind of see how, see how those stick, those are kind of stuck together a little bit. There's just a little bit of glue that will be down in those corners. And what we're just going to do is gently, gently break those joints. This is why I prefer not to have this sit maybe overnight and maybe an hour is just long enough that we can kind of break that little bond that happens down in the, the very corner where the canvas meets that, that corner of the two slats. There you have it. There's your completed timbre. Um, so what we need to do next, um, for this to fit inside of our case, the groove, I'm going to form a little rabbit along the top and bottom edges of this at the table saw with a dado stack. So let's go do that. <music> I've got a quarter inch dado set raised up an, an eighth inch and I've got a zero clearance fence in place. You know, I'm going to cut this an eighth inch deep 
uh, and the groove that it's riding in, you should have plenty of room. But So if you need to adjust, if your timbre is fitting too tightly, you can come back to the saw, raise it slightly above that eighth inch and take off a little more material. That will free up that timbre so it's, it slides smoother. I want to show you this finished cabinet that I built for these timbre doors that we've been talking about. And I want to show you specifically how they kind of fit into the cabinet. So in this cabinet, I have created some grooves on the top and bottom. They're a mirror image of each other. And on the back, I have an entry groove. And that is where we slide these timbers into place. Um, I'm going to install the first door. I only have one set of entry grooves, and it all comes from this corner. So I install my first door, slide it around, and then I'll install my left door. So once I have these in place, I can then put a stop block in that, in that starter groove in the back. And then I can also put a stop block in the back that will basically stop the doors in the middle so they will close at the center of the cabinet. So I hope you enjoyed the video on building timbers. It's a really relatively easy project uh, to do. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big cabinet like this or a roll top desk. This can be incorporated at any small cabinet that you like. But it's a, it's a great little technique, and thanks for watching. <laughs>